Mr. Wakwin, uh, what is your opinion about uh, escalation of refugee, refugee crisis in uh, Europe? Uh, what happened past few weeks? First of all, it's important to, to grasp the numbers. We are talking about a total of 20 million people from Syria and Iraq who have been displaced. In other words, they had to leave their homes because of war, civil war in Syria and war with ISIS in Iraq. The, out of these 20 million, 16 million are still within their own countries. 4 million left their countries and went to Turkey, Jordan and Lebanon, where they are st have been staying in camps for the last four years. The conditions in the camps are very difficult. There's no sanitation, no food, no running water, no hot water, of course. And the conditions there are only deteriorating because more and more people are coming daily. By some estimates, three to, three to five thousand people daily are joining these camps. The West ignored the camps for four years. The West, especially the European Union, but not only, refused to give money to Jordan, Lebanon and Turkey to rebuild the camps, to make them better equipped, to introduce sanitation and running water and so on and so forth. Consequently, after four years, with no sign that the wars are going to end, people in the camps are desperate and they are looking to leave the camps for a way out. Out of these four million, only one million have the capacity to pay smugglers and guides to lead them away from the camps. Of the four million that are in the camps, one million are middle class. Three million are very poor. The three million that are very poor are not likely to leave the camps ever. Only the one million who have some money, can pay the guides, can pay the smugglers, they are likely to leave the camps. Of this one million, half a million already left the camps. And of this half a million, 450,000 already entered Europe. They are in Europe already. So the potential is another half a million. Not like they, they say in the media that another 4 million, another 20 million, only another half a million, that's the potential. Germany already announced that it is willing to accept up to a million, which is the total number available. Throughout this crisis, Germany behaved in a very bizarre way. First of all, without coordinating anything with any other EU member, without consulting, without informing anyone, suddenly the foreign minister of Germany announced a few months ago that Germany is willing to accept 800,000 refugees. Suddenly. Obviously, the minute Germany announced it, it created an incentive and a motivation for the refugees in the camps in Turkey, Jordan and Lebanon to leave the camps and to move into Europe in order to reach Germany. This created a mega crisis along the borders of, of uh, the European Union and along the borders of the countries that are leading to the European Union, like Macedonia, like Serbia. Second thing, Germany did not make, did not announce a clear policy of which type of refugee it is willing to accept. It didn't say, for instance, we are willing to accept only political refugees. It didn't say we are willing to accept refugees between this and this age. It didn't say we are willing to accept refugees with these and these qualifications, uh, education, uh, profession, uh, area of origin. There were, there were no qualifications. Germany said we will accept 800,000 people. Later, Germany said we will accept a million people. Consequently, all types of refugees, all types of people, including immigrants, including economic immigrants, including children, women, men, with profession, without profession, educated and not educated, poor and, and rich, everyone is streaming towards Germany because Germany was not selective in its policy announcements as to whom it will accept. Thirdly, Germany, having, having made this announcement, which totally destabilized Europe, did not follow up with infrastructure. It did not establish camps for the refugees. It did not establish reception centers where they can make a selection, where they can choose between the refugees that deserve asylum status and those that are economic migrants. It did not train personnel to cope with the refugees. It did not establish hospitals, food distribution centers, water distribution centers, pipelines, infrastructure, sewage, nothing. Germany did nothing to absorb these people, which is shocking, taking into account that they could fully expect 
to receive a million people shortly. So it seems that Germany's announcement had less to do with the refugees and more to do with internal and external policies. First of all, Germany's population is aging. Its pension system is in great trouble because young people are not working and they are not contributing to the pension system. And it has huge shortages in many professions. For instance, Germany needs 120,000 computer programmers, for example. Because the population is aging, Germany's workforce is being depleted, in decreasing gradually. So Germany needs immigrants simply for its economy to survive. It makes sense for Germany to absorb a million immigrants if they are young, educated and professional. It does not make sense for Germany to absorb a million immigrants if they are children, old, weak and sick. So there is some economic consideration. In the past, Germany used to absorb huge amounts of immigrants from Czech Republic, from Poland and from Hungary and other countries of Central Europe. Today, because the Central European region is flourishing and prospering, these people don't go to Germany anymore. So Germany doesn't have an influx of immigrants from other countries. It needs immigrants. There is an economic motivation. But I think much more important than the economic motivation. In the past few years, Germany feels betrayed. It feels that it was stabbed in the back. It feels that the countries that it has supported, the countries whose economies it built, like Czech Republic, like Hungary, like Slovakia, like Poland, it feels that these countries betrayed it. Starting in 2003, the countries of Central Europe supported the American policy in Iraq against the German policy. After that, during the Greek debt crisis, Central Europeans acted against Germany. After that, during the Ukraine crisis, Central European countries collaborated with the United States to impose sanctions on Russia, as opposed to German policies. All the time, since 2003, the countries of Central Europe are acting consistently against the geopolitical and economic policies of Germany within Europe, even though the economies of Central Europe rely totally on Germany. Two-thirds of the exports of Hungary, for example, go to Germany. More than 80% of the foreign direct investment in these countries is German. Germany has 3,000 foreign direct investments in these countries. Despite the fact that Germany is actually financing these countries, despite the fact that the economies of these countries are actually German, these countries consistently act against German interests abroad and in the European Union. Germany had enough, especially after the Greek crisis and Ukraine crisis. Germany decided to teach Central Europe a lesson. And the way to teach Central Europe a lesson, in my view, they are using the refugee crisis. They are forcing, they are forcing the Balkans, where they are also not happy with countries like Macedonia and so on. They are forcing the Balkans, they are forcing Greece, they are forcing Hungary to accept refugees on the way to Germany as a way to remind all of them who is the boss, who opens and closes the tap, and who can play havoc with the economies and the fates of these countries. They are given a reminder that Germany decides, Germany makes the decisions about European fate and European direction and European future. Not Hungary, not Serbia, not Macedonia, not Greece. It is Germany and Germany only. The EU and the Eurozone is Germany. And Germany needed to remind these countries that with a single policy announcement, it can destabilize them completely. And it did. Hungary, Hungary is merely implementing long-standing EU policies. The Schengen Agreement, the Periphery Agreement, the, Hungary is the outside border of, uh, of the European Union, as is Greece. Hungary has implemented the policies that were accepted in the EU until Germany made its announcement. It is Germany that is deviating from EU policies. It is Germany that is violating EU policies, not Hungary. It is the job of Hungary under the Schengen Agreement to filter asylum seekers, to filter immigrants. It is the job of Hungary to put them in camps and to interview them and to decide to return political, uh, economic immigrants back to their countries. Hungary, under international treaties and obligations, has to accept only asylum seekers. All other non-political immigrants must be returned to their home countries. These are the EU policies 
the real EU policies. It is Germany that is now seeking to completely revise and undermine decades of EU agreements on free movement of people, on border control, on implementation of immigration policies, on asylum seeking policies. It is Germany that is now changing the game, not Hungary. But Germany is the strongest. So now in the Hungary is presented as the evil, wicked uh, country, the country that is non-humanitarian, that hates refugees. That it's only doing its job. Uh, in some cases, can Macedonia be a collateral damage? Uh, is there any security risks for us? I never understood why Macedonia regards the refugee crisis as a bad thing. The refugee crisis is very good for Macedonia. First of all, not a single refugee wants to stay in Macedonia. There is no risk whatsoever that refugees will stay in Macedonia. So, there's no risk of that. Second thing, as the refugees pass through Macedonia, each refugee on average spends 300 euros. Multiply 300 euros by 150,000 refugees and you will see that the refugees live in Macedonia 20 to 40 million euros. That's a big boost to the economy. They buy bicycles, they buy food, they buy water, they pay, they in inject money into the local economy. What's wrong with that? They're like tourists, in effect. They are 10-day tourists. Thirdly, I think Macedonia is making a mistake, a serious mistake, that it is not offering to highly specific immigrants, immigrants with money, immigrants with education, immigrants with professions, immigrants with access to export markets in the Middle East, immigrants with connections, I think Macedonia should offer them to stay in Macedonia. It is a unique opportunity. Many of the people who pass through Macedonia are highly educated people, computer programmers, doctors, nurses, with connections abroad, businessmen, merchants, traders, why not to isolate these one, two, three, five thousand people and to give them excellent conditions to stay in Macedonia? Instead of thinking of them as enemies, invaders, occupiers, you should think of them as tourists who leave a lot of money here behind them and potential for highly uh, qualified group of people to enhance the local economy by staying here.